Hi everyone, in today's recap video we're going to be looking at electrostatics and all the important equations that you guys need to understand and you need to be able to use in this section of physics. Now remember that this section is important of course in grade 11 but you also need it again for grade 12. So if you are in grade 12, remember in your physics paper, you will be writing on your grade 11 electrostatics work again. So you do need to go through this, this video and recap again on all the important equations. The first thing I want to talk about uh, and recap is the conversion of units. So in this section, working with correct units is so important. And in our equations, most of the time when it comes to charge, remember charge, the, the symbol for charge is Q, and we measured in coulombs, which is a C. And we have to, most of the time with charge, we have to actually convert into coulombs before we can substitute into an equation. So if you are given a unit that is not a coulomb, we need to know how to convert. I'm quickly going to run through the, the most commonly used units. So we get a millicoulomb. We get, we then after the millicoulomb, we get the microcoulomb. Then we get the nanocoulomb. And then we get the picocoulomb. And this is getting smaller and smaller from top to bottom. If I want to convert, I'm not going to go into detail, but I'm going to give you a quick recap. So if you want to convert a millicoulomb to a coulomb, you would divide by a thousand. So you would basically add a multiply 10 to the minus 3 after your number. A microcoulomb, you divide by another 1,000, so you get multiply by 10 to the negative 6, and so we go on. Another 1,000 to the power of minus 9, and another 1,000 to the power of um, negative 12. So, for example, if you had 4 microcoulombs and you wanted to convert, you keep your number 4 and you just add your conversion. So if you learn that um, it is multiplied by 10 to the negative 6, you just add that multiply by 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Right, you need to understand as well, but this is just a quick way for you to remember. The first equation that I want to recap today in this video is the equation when you have two charges and the charges come together and they basically get a new charge. So let's say you've got charge 1, Q1 and Q2. They're standing separately. And let's say now we push them together. So what happens? We're going to push them together so that those two charges basically touch one another. Q1 and Q2. And then we let them move apart once again. Now, now they're apart again. What will the charges now be? Once you take two different charges and you let them touch, in this middle point over there, what happens is all the electrons, they basically become spread equally. So however many electrons you've got, they become spread equally. So that once those two charges pull apart, the charges are then equal. And if you wanted to now go and work out the value of that charge, you would then use this equation. Q nu, which is the new charge at the end, equals Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. It is given on your information sheet. So you don't have to learn it, just wrote learning out your head. But you do need to understand a few things. With this equation, you can use any units, meaning... You do not have to just stick to coulombs. You can use a microcoulomb, you can use a millicoulomb, you can use a picocoulomb, and what's the one that, that I'm missing? A nanocoulomb. You can use any one of those, and of course you can use coulombs. But you must just make sure that you use the same unit for Q1 and Q2. So if I use a microcoulomb for Q1, then I must use a microcoulomb for Q2, and then my answer Q nu will also be a microcoulomb. Okay, so in this equation, you're not limited with units. Use whichever units you want. The other important thing here, and I'm going to just say it's super important. If you have a negative charge, you include the sign. This is, in the equations that I'm, I'm going to chat about in this video, this is the only equation where you include the negative. So if it was a negative 2 microcoulomb, you would actually substitute a negative 2 in there. You wouldn't drop that negative. 
The next important equation that I'm going to recap is to work out the number of electrons. So I'm just using that um, hash sign as number. Number of electrons is equal to the charge over the charge on an electron. Now, charge on an electron, QE, is actually given. It's 1,6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That is given. You don't need to learn it. It will be on your information sheet, grade 11. So don't stress about that. Um, sorry, it's negative. Remember, electrons always have a negative charge. Now, if you look at this equation on the left, if you want a number of electrons, you never want a negative answer, right? Because if I say to you, how many apples do you have? And you say to me, you've got two apples, that makes sense. If you say to me, you've got minus two apples, that makes no sense. So if you want a quantity, you don't use a negative. That's not going to um, explain a quantity. So in this equation, we do not use negative. So negative signs are not included here. So it means that when we substitute this value, this, this negative 1,6 times 10 to the minus 19, we do not take the negative, we just take the net value, the positive value at the bottom. Q on top is, of course, the charge, and now we have to use coulombs. We may not use any other units. So only coulombs over here, and then you will be given a number of electrons. And then, of course, the third important equation that I want to talk about today is Coulomb's Law. And Coulomb's Law, you must be able to explain both mathematically as well as in words. So Coulomb's Law basically says that if you have two charges, let's say we've got Q1 and we've got Q2, there will be a force that exists between these two, either attraction or repulsion. That force is directly proportional, remember that symbol is the directly proportional sign, to the product of the two charges, and it is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges. Okay, if we put it together and we use a constant, we get this equation, F equals to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And let's talk about this quickly. So force is measured in newtons. K is a constant. It's 9 multiplied by 10 to the 9. Don't stress about that. That's given. It is on your information sheet. So just make sure you, you don't write it down incorrectly. Q1 and Q2. Those are charges. They must be in coulombs. Only coulombs. You cannot use a microcoulomb or a nanocoulomb or anything like that. R is the distance, it must be in meters. So only meters, you can't use millimeters, you can't use centimeters or anything else. And here, super important, if you've got a negative charge, we do not include it. So negative, we do not include it into this actual equation. So if you've got, um, let's say, negative 2 microcoulomb, Firstly, you're going to convert that, so it becomes a negative 2 multiplied by 10 to the negative 6 coulomb. The value you're going to substitute in, let's say that was Q1, you would substitute that 2 multiplied by 10 to the negative 6 in over there. So you don't include your negative. Now with Coulomb's law, you can actually also use this equation to work out theoretically what would happen to the force between two charges without actually having any values. So I'll give you guys an example. Let's say we have two charges. I'm going to tr call this one Q1, and I'm going to call this one Q2. And let's say there's a force between them, and the force that is experienced between these two is force F. And the distance between the two is distance R, okay, in meters. Now let's say that we decide to go and double the size of charge Q1. And let's say we decide to also double the distance R. And now I say to you, how would the force change? So if you ever are given a question and... For grade 11 and grade 12, watch out in short questions, multiple choice questions, things like that. This would pop up. Or um, it, as a part of a longer question, maybe your first part, a one mark question. You, you might be confused because you don't have values. 
So we now need to work out, and you can, if you can see it, if your math is strong, fine. If you can't, I'm going to show you a long method now how you can actually work this out. So let's say that my F original, my original force is K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. What change did we make here? So let's say my new force is going to be K, and then instead of Q1, we doubled it, right? So it would be 2 multiplied by Q1. We didn't change Q2. And what did we do to the distance R? We doubled it. So instead of R, it is 2R and then squared. Now you multiply everything out and you take your numbers to the left. So we would have 2 K, Q1, Q2 over 4R squared. And now you'll see that 2 and that 4 will cancel, and it will leave you with 1 over 2, big bracket K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And now hang on a second, you'll see that this is the same as the thing we actually started with, and that is F original. So in other words, this is equal to a half multiplied by F original. So we can say if we had to double Q1 and double the distance, the force would basically become a half of the original force. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And as always, at the end of our videos, there's a question for you guys to try, so a bit of a challenge. So here's the question for you guys. We start with two charges, Q1, Q2. They experience a force F and they are a distance R apart. So that's pretty much the same as the last screen. Now we're going to introduce a few changes. The changes that we make are our two charges, Q1 and Q2. Q1, the size of that charge is doubled. Q2, the size of that charge becomes three times larger. And then our distance R also becomes three times larger. So my question to you guys is, by what factor does the force now change? So in other words, we are going to have a new force. It is going to be a certain value multiplied by the original force. It's going to change by a certain factor. I want to know what is that factor. So grab a pen. Grab a piece of paper, try work it out, use this video as a guide. Once you've done it, pop over to our virtual classroom if you are a member of our online school. Um, and there will be a link. Put your, put your answer into that link and I'll give you guys feedback from there and we can discuss it in our next online lesson. And if you're not a member of our online school, you're welcome to go onto our website to read up more about what we do. There's the web address there, amandaowenonline.co.za. We offer online extra lessons in both maths and science, and it's based on the South African curriculum. It is done in real time, so it's not done like these videos. You basically uh, do interact, but it is all online. And, um, yeah, pop over to the website, read up. If you've got a question, send us an email, and we can take it from there. If you're not a member of our online school, you are also still welcome to follow our videos, either on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel, and we post recap videos every week um, that will basically help you guys in your preparation for tests and exams in maths and science.